In this program, we will introduce you to some of the animals who often fall prey to predators. They are known as plains game and live on the plains in Africa. The three families you will meet are the zebra, the wildebeest, and the impala. The first family you will meet is the zebra. Are the zebra purely donkeys in football jerseys, or do these stripes serve a valuable purpose? Opinions vary in this regard. Some say that the stripes serve as protection from the tsetse fly, as striped zebra attract less flies than other grazers who are plain colored. Others say that the stripes act as camouflage by breaking up their outline and confusing the predators. This idea has some merit, as a herd of zebra milling together while being hunted must look like a very blurred picture to a predator. Like all animals in Africa, zebra need water to survive and need to drink at least once a day. Zebra are very noisy and active animals who live out in the open. They do not freeze in response to danger, when perhaps if they did, their camouflage would be of help. In tests, it was found that zebra were attracted to black and white stripes painted onto flat boards. This probably explains why there is a strong herd instinct in the zebra. The stripes help them to identify other family members. Zebra at the waterhole drink very nervously because they are very exposed. They will react instantly to any possible danger. Zebra are then likely to group tightly together and retreat to the thicker bush where they feel safer. They can be found on about a quarter of the African continent on grasslands or in thick bush. Unprotected foals can fall prey to a lion on the lookout for an easy meal, so it is not unusual for an adult to rush off trying to attract the lion's attention away from the youngster until he is able to return to the safety of the herd. Because newborn foals are easy targets for predators, they are able to walk and then run within an hour of their birth. It is instinctive to them to be able to identify their own mother by her stripes, which makes it very easy for the youngster to keep in contact with her. You see, every zebra has its own unique stripe pattern, which is just like a fingerprint. Zebras are grazers, just like horses. Apart from the protection their stripes provide, they have very powerful hind legs that are capable of severely injuring a predator. Our young zebra feels very safe in the presence of the herd and will often just take a nap while the rest of the herd stands guard. 
An important point to remember is that although zebra often migrate on a seasonal basis prompted by grazing conditions, they are continually on the alert for predators. Zebra mix readily with other plains game and can often be found in the company of the wildebeest, who is also a grazer and sometimes known as the fool of the bush. This nickname for our second family of Plains game is derived from his strange attitudes and body language. For no rhyme or reason, the whole herd will react to the antics of one of its members. Cantering or galloping with what assumes is no sense of direction, they will throw their heads up high and roll them from side to side with a stiff-legged motion. They almost look like clowns. They are found scattered over the grasslands of Africa. Like the zebra, they too have a strong herd instinct and will react as one to any form of intrusion, even if it is not threatening. Unlike its name, the adult blue wildebeest are dark brown in color. This serves as excellent camouflage in the tall grass. They have a very strong sense of smell and are known to be able to smell oncoming rains from a long way off. Unlike the zebra, who have no horns, the wildebeest are members of the bossed horn family, which is animals with curved horns and a thick crown. Both the adult male and female have horns, whereas the young wildebeest is fawn in color and rather silly looking with virtually no horns at all. All wildebeest are grazers, just like the zebra, and need to eat as often as possible in order to grow big and strong. The constant presence of their mortal enemy, the lion, will always prompt the wildebeest to rush off at a gallop, hoping to avoid this accomplished hunter. In the wild, not all of them are lucky enough to escape. Another unusual and strange feature of the wildebeest is their V-shaped tail, which acts as an effective fly swatter. It is the tail that helps us to tell the difference between the blue wildebeest and the black wildebeest. Blue wildebeest have a plain black tail. The black wildebeest has a white busy tail that looks like a fan when it runs. Buffalo are the other members of the Bost family. The shape of their horns is very much like those of the wildebeest. Buffalo, however, are much larger than the wildebeest and are generally bad tempered. Young wildebeest have straight horns with a very small boss which will thicken as they grow older. All grazers are similar to domestic cows and live off grass. Being plains game, they prefer the open spaces, be it the grasslands with scattered trees or the more dry regions like the salt pans which are found in part of Africa. Living on the salt pans and in open spaces has many advantages. Although they are more visible to predators, the wildebeest in turn can spot a predator at a distance and flee in time. Being social creatures, just like the zebra, they will often be found in the company of impala, who they share their grazing with. The impala is our third plains game family. Their social structure is completely different than the zebra and the wildebeest. Impala gather together in two group types. During the breeding season, the herd may comprise of 20 to 40 females with one or two males, or consist of males only, which is called a bachelor herd. It is often found that one male is the leader of a female herd of about 20. 
in the breeding season, the dominant herd male chases off all other males in the herd. These males then form their own bachelor herd. Impalas are found in the eastern side of Africa and prefer the safety of thick, dense bush. Female herds spend their days grooming each other with the knowledge that should there be any danger, the dominant male will warn them. The impala differ from the zebra and the wildebeest as the impala males have horns and the females have no horns at all. After birth, the impala lamb is very unstable on its legs, making it very vulnerable to predators. The female will hide it in thick bush for the first two days. Unable to walk properly, it is essential that the baby stays hidden, protected from any danger. The impala's greatest enemy is the leopard, who will pounce on a young impala should it venture out from its hiding place, unaware that danger is lurking above. Luckily, this leopard has already had its fill and is only interested in sleeping. The impala lamb safely joins its mother. A baby impala recognizes its mother by the tufts of black hair on her hind legs. Underneath these tufts are scent glands which make it possible for the lamb to follow her. Besides these scent glands, impalas also recognize each other by the three stripes on their rump. The male impala is very territorial and has scent glands on its face. With these glands, he leaves his scent on bushes to mark his territory and to warn off intruding males from other herds. Because impala are much smaller than either the zebra or the wildebeest, it is these sharp horns that are their biggest weapon against intruders. You can tell the age of an impala ram by the size and length of its horns. Should any other male venture into his territory, the impala ram will become very aggressive. He grunts to warn the other male that he is trespassing. A savage fight could ensue should the intruder not retreat. Impala fights are short but fierce and can sometimes cause great harm. The females look on in amusement. This intruder has lost the fight and lost one of his horns. To make sure he does not return, the intruder is escorted out of the territory by the dominant herd males to make sure he knows his place in the future. Impalas have excellent hearing and will constantly turn their ears in different directions while grazing to make sure that they are not surprised by an enemy. Being both grazers and browsers, which means eating grass and leaves, the impala stand a better chance of surviving drought conditions, unlike the zebra and wildebeest who are grazers only. The very young impalas stay close to their mothers and nurse the first few months until old enough to go off on their own, whether they become part of a bachelor herd or become the new male leaders of female herds. <laughs>